Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 50 of my Manchester United Football Manager 2015 Let's Play. And we have a huge game here. It's a Capital One Cup final against Tottenham. It's absolutely huge. It is only Capital One Cup, but it's just one of those games you really get up for because if you win it, <laughs> you win a cup competition and that goes down on your record. It's not just another win in the, in the league or something. Uh, it's something, yeah, to put on your record, like I said, uh, another comp uh, cup competition one would be very, very nice. We have been on great form recently. Uh, interesting one is Radamel Falcao. He scored 18 goals in 13 starting appearances, and of late, he's been just insane. Last two games he's played, he's got a hat-trick and only playing about 60 minutes on average from those games, and against decent sides as well, one against Tottenham and once against B yeah, Benfica in the Champions League, which is also going to be a crucial game. You know we have important games coming up. Um, Arsenal, I'm not going to play in this episode. Um, I want to keep this kind of schedule i suppose you can say up for my videos and um, how they're going right now where i play one game live on 3d live on 3d it, playing two games probably takes too long to upload um if i'm honest yeah, it's a big upload size uh but yeah we have important games so i might play arsenal off camera especially their eighth in the league they're not really a threat this season so they're almost counted as a mid-table side and at home should be getting the victory haven't really played too well fa cup may play that because it is a cup competition um, but then, yeah, day after Champions League, the yeah second leg. So, but we won the first leg six nil. But because it's Champions League, I do want to show it. Anything can happen. But you wouldn't imagine we'll lose six nil. And the game after against Wigan, again, these kind of games are going to be elementary wins. That's why the they're kind of the ones I'm going to play off camera. And that's the kind of style of Football Manager videos as well. I know I've done um, a lot of live games, like my uh, Bar City series. Um, that's live and ones I've done like every single game. That's what I mean, recording every single game. But I'm kind of going to an old school way of fo making Football Manager videos uh, with this series from now. So hopefully you do understand that. I do really enjoy recording Manchester United. Some people say like you're a big team and stuff, but I don't know. Sometimes you enjoy managing a big team because you get to, yeah, you have good facilities. You can bring through good youth players and already only one season in, in terms of one youth intake. We've got one coming very soon. I think it's on the 5th. Around the 5th or 6th, it's before the Wolves game. So that might be involved in that. I might do the youth intake. And then, so it's got a bit more substance, the episode. Not just a FA Cup 6th round. So we'll see. We'll see about that anyway. But look, Rowan Pressland. First season at the club. Well, he joined last season. Played him in one game. But his, we had a pre-season at the club. All that kind of stuff. He's already worth 6 million. He's absolutely amazing. Just insane defender he's already a good player for sky but championship sides but looking at his attributes and how he's played for me his ratings have been great so uh he's becoming a first team player will be a future captain without a doubt and right now you can notice our squad's pretty big and it especially looks like that now because we have no injuries whatsoever so i've actually turned that around haven't i like, I felt I was getting a lot of injuries. I'm not sure if it's the latest update. Um, my new, yeah, fitness coaches, my new training uh, setup and all that kind of stuff. Uh, spreading the load in between all our coaches and changing it up a little bit. I might show that in another episode if you want to see that. But of recent times, we're not getting <laughs> injuries. Maybe it's just a lot of things uh, coming together. But either way, um, probably guys on my transfer list uh, for when we finish the season, uh, probably these two strikers, even though they've done well for me, uh, Giovinco, who's actually scored our most goals this season, and Rescaldani, you still look at Giovinco, and he's going down in some attributes, and he's 29, almost 30, we might be able to cash in on him, like I always talked about this season, sign him on a free transfer, we can make some decent uh, profit off him, of course, yes, I know we're paying his wages and all that, but we didn't sign him for anything at all, so he can maybe sell him for, um, with a bit of luck, 10 million, maybe to 15 million. So, uh, yeah, there's a few guys, even Axel Witzel. I've tried to give him a chance, played him in the last game where we dominated, and he had a 7.9 rating, so you've got to take that into consideration as well. But also, it was a cruising win. So, we still have to test him in bigger games, and we've got guys like Telemans, we've got Will Hughes coming through as well, Ramiro's there, Mata. So, yeah, leave your suggestions as well. Who do you think we should sell? And who do you think I should give more a chance to? 
Uh, but in this kind of important game, want to play a fairly strong team. Belanta and Phil Jones will be the starting center backs. But I'm really happy. And that's another uh, sign with being a big team. You get to build it the way you are. I've had a few comments saying I've ruined Manchester United. Well, I've won the league in the first season. Uh, looking to do so again this season. And we're looking, hopefully, um, in this episode, we can pick up another cup competition, even though it's not so much to brag about. Uh, but I'm also happy about winning the league in the first season, even though it was last season was so difficult. We had a lot of ups and downs, like goalkeeper problems and that, like with the Haya uh, Rooney as well, causing some trouble in the dressing room. And yeah, people said I ruined Manchester United because I sold those players. But they, they were the ones making it hard for me. So now I sold them and... It's really no surprise that we are cruising in the league. If you're new to my videos uh, right now, uh, we are five points ahead of Chelsea and we've played two less games than them. And Liverpool's played only one more game than us. And yeah, they're, they're the three points uh, below Chelsea. So kind of in the same boat as Chelsea. And our goal difference is 53. So um, you can see that I believe the decisions I've made um, have helped the team. Uh, grow, but that's just my opinion. I'm happy. I'm not sure. Obviously, there are people with their own opinions and all that kind of stuff, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. And obviously, the way we're playing and everything is going on the right track. But even saying that, like, uh, well, first I'll say here, the, yeah, these fans have been fantastic for us. They're the ones who play or who really pay your wages. Go out there and win the trophy for them. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, even though we're doing well, I always look for ways to improve. Like, I haven't even got to that stage yet. And also, I'm putting this match stats. I don't think I've put that in an episode yet. It depends when I upload this. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing as well. I'm always looking to improve. I haven't got to the stage where I'm developing young players yet. And that should be an exciting part of this series. Maybe after I've succeeded and won Champions League. I'm not sure. I don't think it'll be this season. Of course, I'd love to win it. But I just don't think we have the amazing ability of a starting 11 um like if we, we don't have like a Real Madrid kind of team or a Bayern Munich I'm sure you would agree with that and I'm definitely saying that myself uh we have done pretty well so far but we've got to improve our squad to a yeah Real Madrid or Bayern Munich stage to win Champions League uh to have that kind of um yeah killer finish or yeah just those kind of world-class players whereas we do have a couple but it's not like a full team of world-class players and that's always your kind of goal uh, with this. That's what I've done anyway. I like signing regens or, in general, younger players and building them and, yeah, letting them grow through into the first team. It's it's kind of like you're nurturing them, like you're growing them. And it's it kind of, for me, it's like one of the games I played heaps when I was younger, like Pokemon and you train your Pokemon up. It's kind of like that in a way. In a way, it is uh, where you nurture your younger players up to into the first team, like as they grow up levels and that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a little minor way I see it. Not it's it, of course it's not exactly the same, but it's it's a similar kind of feeling, um, I suppose. So it's a good mix. Uh, but either way, uh, we're having a few chances here, but we're not quite capitalising, and that was perfectly showcased there by Adnan Yanazai, who could not get that shot on target, unfortunately. Come on, one matter. He puts it in. Uh, it's defended well by Spurs. Back to one matter. Rafael, who's a really good right back, I've mentioned a few times so far. Adnan Yanazai, the wonder kid. Falcao, Di Maria! What a save by Hugo Lloris. He's arguably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. Uh, De Gea's really strong as well. But yeah, I've always liked Lloris. A very good goalkeeper and no penalty. Good challenge. And of course, we did sell Javier Hernandez. Again, it was one of those situations. Um, I started this save on the beta. If you've been watching since then, I appreciate it heaps. Uh, as Yanazai almost scores. But yeah, I was playing John the beta. And I even finished the season on that as well. Um, and when I finished the first season, H Hernandez came back from loan. But it said he needed a work permit. So, like, he couldn't play. Because he needed a work permit for whatever reason. But then he ended up going to Tottenham, and then when it was the full version, uh, he didn't need the work permit anymore, so yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with that, but for me, Hernandez is not my style of striker, um, I like them to be more than just a poacher, they need to create as well, like Royce, that's why I signed him of course, and the types like Van Persie, that's why Van Persie's probably done really well for me, and guys like Memphis Depay, we play him as striker, because he can create as well, well here we go, Royce! Royce Di Maria, uh, that's a bit lucky, I wouldn't say that's a sister Royce, but it ended up being like a shot on target of course, and it led to the goal, so that was nice, you can see we've had four click-up chances, 
dominated possession. Yanazai played through Royce. Uh, the shot was powerful enough uh, to force the parry. And then Di Maria uh, was there uh, to apply the finish. A couple minutes before half time, it would be nice to seal another and maybe seal a victory here. Adnan Yanazai. Yanazai sets up Royce. Ooh, and I love Royce as a signing. He's a world-class player, and he can play on the left side of midfield, the right side of midfield, or as a striker. And that's why he's so fantastic for me. And both as a kind of advanced forward role, where it's closer to the poacher, where he's the guy who's expected to finish. Or he can play as a complete forward on support, and he ends up scoring or getting assist anyway. I'm still confused by the assist and goals. I'm used to goals being in front. But unfortunately, that is not the case. But here, assertively, we have to say don't get complacent. That's a key thing to do. Uh, well, it, sometimes when a player's played well, it gets unhappy, but then you just say, maybe passionately, I'm very happy with your performance. Okay, sometimes it yeah, fixes that reaction. Uh, but not always, because the game is not scripted in that way. It's not like you say this every single time and you'll get this certain reaction. That's a good thing about Football Manager as well. So, yeah, at a time, uh, during maybe in the last couple of weeks or something, uh, I've got some messages from people to say, please don't stop this series, and that kind of... In, messages in a similar way not all exactly that way but with the same kind of theme to the message i suppose you can say or comments uh but yeah i want to say i'm definitely not uh, as falcao um finishes that for his 19th goal of the season i don't even know how many games in a row he scored it's a crazy amount right now and it's probably a record for me in football manager i don't think i've had a player that scored this regularly like in terms of games a goal scored in a row just in of games like He's on an amazing streak right now, and I'm pretty sure I've never had anything like it. Maybe a long time ago that I couldn't remember. But, yeah, I've never seen anything like it that I can remember anyway. Di Maria, we're really uh, just turning it on right now. Uh, playing some amazing stuff. But like I said about uh, potentially, maybe, yeah, maybe people think I'm going to stop this. Sometimes, uh, maybe there's a week where I might just upload a couple episodes because I want to focus on something else, maybe some FIFA videos or whatever. But I feel that's that's the way my channel is and I don't want people to compare me, say, do like this guy, upload this every single day or whatever. But that's the reason why that's someone else's channel and not my channel. If you want to watch what they do, you watch their channel. I want to bring something different in terms of versatility with my channel something fresh keeping it fresh something different every day so you don't see the same same kind of thing every single day something with a bit of a twist so um, that's what I want with my videos I'm not going to say it's what I wanted from the start but it's what I've grown into doing so um, yeah hopefully you enjoyed it anyway there's a lot more to come like I plan to do this for the duration of FM 15 so I don't have many ideas to start heaps of saves like this in Bar City really i don't have any other like a big motivation to do another series so yeah um, i'm not going to be starting many other series despite what other people may think like these have it can be long term for multiple reasons bar city lower league management kind of self-explanatory you know how that goes <laughs> and trying to get to the top could take forever and man united just like i said uh, trying to nurture young players through and and hopefully regions i've never had this on a series on youtube where my regions start to become key players like when they're in the mid 20s or something like play if you do want to see like 10 season plus with this like for me just to play it for the duration of fm15 regardless on my successes to still keep interested in it uh yeah leave your thoughts if you do want to see that uh but i may make one more change i'm not really sure who because we are playing so well we might just rest yanazai right midfield's becoming a problem because we've got a few talented players royce can play there quadrado and of course adnan yanazai and we've got some youth players coming through like that mexican right midfielder uh, right winger so we'll see it's yeah you don't know if he's going to come because of course i did sign him in the first season he's got pretty good potential so we'll leave him in reserves for now um, that, like I said, I think that Mexican guy, I think he's Mexican, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, Herving Lozano, I think that's his name. But either way, uh, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're good in that position. If we get maybe two injuries, uh, we'll be covered. Oh, no, they score. Paulinho. <laughs> this cup final is not over yet. And they take their chance from the corner. I did work on defending set pieces for a little while. Uh, before this game, but then I changed it to attacking movement, which I thought was a good decision. We scored the first two goals, but now they score uh, from a set piece. 
We might look to make one more change, though. And who would that be? Royce. Well, judging off his rating, he hasn't had a good game. And I didn't mean to click on him, but yeah, you can see. He's been really good for me since joining. Six starts and one off the bench appearance. Uh, and with that, he's got four goals and six assists in the league. Uh, so definitely worth the money. Uh, we did pay for him. Yeah, of course, he's, I don't really need to talk about him too much. You know his talents. So, But he's going to come off here. He's on a yellow card. Hasn't had a really good game. Oh, we're being on Memphis Depay. You know he can do something special. He's been improving as a player as well. Look how good he looks. He's got 10 goals this Premier League season as well. He's got it like, for a lot of people. And for me, he takes a lot of long shots and wastes chances. But he still scores a lot of goals. If you just look at his tally of goals as a whole and his performance for the team, you take the bad with the good. Because he's still going to play really well for you. He's going to score goals. So that's what you've got to take into account as well. Not the couple chances he wastes. Like you think about Ronaldo as well. He was the same or he is the same. He does waste a few chances. He likes to be selfish. But he's world class and he takes a lot of chances as well. Depay is definitely in the same mold. If you can become like at least half the player Ronaldo is and was for Manchester United during that time. We'll be, have, we'll be having amazing player on our hands. Oh, Will Hughes is on. Will Hughes. I really want him to do well because I do want to mold a lot of English lads into the team uh, to be realistic in that way as well. And not just because people have requested that, but it's it's realistic. I, I, I actually want that as well. I want to build a decent amount of English talents. I want to see them uh, being called up to the national team. Like maybe someone like a Rowan Pressland would be amazing for him to be maybe an English captain at one point in his career, and we know we would have developed and trained an amazing player. And those are the kind of things that make me feel happy when doing a big team kind of save. If people why if people question why I do big teams, uh, that's the main reason why. Like I said earlier, nurturing the talent and uh, getting them uh, to that world class ability, and yeah, that world class recognition. Oh, uh, Soldado. Ooh, that could have been interesting. I think that was Belanta who bodied him. I'm pretty sure Belanta was just using his strength there. Because, yeah, Soldado was on the ball and suddenly he wasn't. <laughs> he was looking to score. And now we might finish it off. Ooh, it was almost over the line. But here, we've you just seen our dominance. You see the difference in quality. We've had nine clear-cut chances, 14 on target, 25 shots in total. Like, there's not many teams that can compete with us. And Will Hughes, what a shot, but it wasn't a goal. How wasn't that a goal? It was an amazing chance, and it's another shot on target. We're just killing it in that way. We're just in a rich vein of form right now. This season has been faultless. There's nothing I can really remember that I've been too disappointed uh, performance-wise and results-wise. Uh, we've been really solid, so I always say we need to improve, but we're definitely on the right track here. Um, we're doing... Uh, we're doing as best as we can. And I can't be more happy with the boys. And look at this. Celebrations for a cup win. It's only Capital One Cup. But it's good to have that win. And I'm happy with the performance. Look delighted. And yeah, 15 shots on target. Giovinco actually was a top scorer in the competition. But unfortunately, we didn't play him. But either way, uh, big thanks to him with all the goals he scored. Important goals as well. So, what a win was against a good team as well, Tottenham, but uh, we were too good at the end of the day. But you can see here, Arsenal actually pick up a 4-0 victory, so the next game against Arsenal could be important. Uh, leave in your comments if you want to see it, but they're obviously fighting for Champions League position. We're in a really strong position to win the league. You can't really see us dropping it. Like, even I, I can't see ourselves, like, maybe losing four or five games, or even, like, two or three I can't see that. Like, who have we lost? We've lost 2-3 against Burnley. That was kind of... Uh, yeah, that's not... That wasn't a game you would see from us. It was really... Uh, yeah, something not you... Like, yeah, like I said, yeah, it, I don't know how to explain it uh, properly. I don't know why I'm just lost for words. But, like, that's what I mean. It's not something you've seen from us this season. That's what I'm basically trying to say. Uh, the only other loss was Chelsea, 3-1. Um, and uh, AC Milan <laughs> earlier in the season... But as our players gelled and all that kind of thing, we've been on a great run. So it was kind of, yeah, it was un unexpected. Unexpected loss that was. Uh, but definitely, it can happen. It does show I can't 
be unbeaten throughout a season, it's definitely a hard task. That's something I want to strive to achieve, but we're going to have to have a really amazing squad for that to happen going unbeaten but either way i hope you enjoyed the episode and sorry if there's been a slow of uploads uh, recently just because it's near christmas i've been pretty busy and all of that kind of stuff but i hope you do understand that it is christmas and i hope you're having a good time all that kind of stuff and i do want to be in that way now kind of more well i think i've always been that way i'm not sure if people have seen it that way but yeah i've always been a fairly nice person i like to broadcast myself on youtube as a fairly nice person and in that way and hopefully you do get that from my videos and the tone of my voice as well all the time sometimes i might get frustrated uh during a game or something uh because i'm not doing well or something but that's not like a reflection of who i am personally sometimes people see it that way but yeah like if you met me in real life i'm probably yeah one of the nicest people we ever meet so i want to reflect that more in my videos so as i said um hopefully have a safe christmas and new year's all that kind of stuff and i'll see you guys next time